All right, my most excellent internet friends. And you have been, so thank you for that in my, my short YouTube career so far. Um, you guys have been really, really good to me. I love talking to you in the comments, by the way, so just keep that up. But let's talk about the hand, shall we? I've talked about the hand a little bit in other videos here and there to different extents, but I figured I'd just devote a video to it in detail, answer some questions so you guys know what I'm dealing with and not dealing with, and also for kind of archival purposes, so down the road we can kind of compare and check my progress, or hopefully not lack of progress, but you know, that's, that's how things go. But in order to explain the hand, yeah, and the odd serendipities of my life, we have to go all the way back to the very beginning, as in birth, as in genetics. I seem to have a version of Ehlers-Danlos, which is a genetic predisposition to having terrible connective tissue. The things that hold together my skeleton and hold my muscles to my skeleton have the structural quality of dried out rotten rubber bands. Which has an upside, the upside being that I haven't, despite having a lot of activities that would have broken a lot of my bones, I haven't broken a lot of my bones. When the things happen that would normally break my bones, most of the time I simply fly apart like some sort of Lego figure. So, dislocation is the rule of, well, many days. Sometimes with very little effort. Now, I have dislocated pretty much every joint in my body multiple times at this point, and because of that, have a very amusing selection of braces and canes and crutches, and yeah, just standing by, because I never know when the next fun is going to happen. Well, let's talk about that fun a little bit, shall we? Um, once a joint dislocates, it also puts additional stretch on that already rotten rubber band tissue, which means the joint gets even sloppier and more easily prone to fun party tricks. Yeah, not so fun party tricks where it just suddenly comes apart at the drop of a hat. Also, every time one of my joints gets injured, my body has this amusing habit of calcifying the crap out of that joint. So arthritis which I've been dealing with since I was a young teenager. Well, pretty much since the start of my martial arts career, which was designed to get me healthy. And there's the trick and the gamble. Yes, muscle conditioning, toning, strengthening can help prevent these injuries, absolutely. But they're also the same kinds of things that would injure me. So a lot of people simply say, Mike, don't be a dumbass, take it easy. My, my, my doctors actually also say that to me a lot. Well, another fun fact. I don't get any warning before it happens. You would think I would get some kind of pain feedback before a joint fails, but I don't. So as far as I know, I'm well within tolerances for what I'm doing. And, but then suddenly there's a loud pop. And I feel a loud pop. And one of my joints isn't where I left it certainly not where it's supposed to be, and then the pain comes, and then it might be weeks, months, or maybe never that I get full function back. So, yeah, fun. And as I've gotten older, yeah, things have obviously crept up on me and gotten worse, and eventually my entire body's probably going to get held together by duct tape at some point. But, yeah, certain things I know I can't do anymore. Such as in my martial arts career, um... Grappling arts, for instance, like jujitsu. Yeah, somebody with any kind of skill grabs me by the arm right now, it's probably just going to come off. So, yeah, it's not going to happen. However, there's a lot of things I still can do and a lot of things I can do adaptively, and that's kind of the focus of this. Like I said, the reason I got into martial arts was to get myself more physically healthy and mentally healthy. So I'm not going to give it up, but there's stuff i got to deal with. So how did this happen? Well, in a couple of stages. The first stage was about 16 years ago. I was at work and in my spare time working for a nonprofit, I was helping to remodel a potential new job site. And the overuse of a lot of hand tools. Again, I didn't realize I was doing myself any damage until it was done. I ground up like three carpels in my wrist and also 
pop the thumb tendon. It's called De Curvain's tenosynovitis. Yes, I had to practice saying that. Um, one of the thumb tendons basically jumps out of its groove in the wrist. Very nasty, very painful, very limiting. So I spent a long time in physical therapy and also in a brace. Now, two very coincidental things in my life, one of which I am a big fan of fantasy and science fiction, as I've said, and in every good fantasy and science fiction pulp series, right? There's always one character. Hero, villain, anti-hero, whatever, with a robot hand. So, you know, hey, now I got mine. <laughs> appropriate, also appropriate. One of my first jobs was working with a gentleman who started his own affordable orthotics and prosthetics shop making limbs and braces for people who needed limbs and braces. Now this also folded over into my martial arts practice at the time because I started working with these individuals to try to do martial arts with people who were missing limbs, had restricted movement, maybe even confined to a wheelchair. And as part of learning how to build limbs and braces, I did a lot of metal work and leather work and working with laminates and resins and things like that. But I also spent a little bit of uh, spare time and scrap material building myself a set of braces, not for support, but to limit my range of motion so I would know what it was like for these individuals moving with artificial limbs. I even spent time learning how to get myself around in a wheelchair so I would know what that was like before I started working with these guys, basically doing anything. And it turns out that came in really handy later in my life. I was able to make myself a selection of braces at different stages of recovery and for different purposes to help me through that process. And again, like I said, we're talking, this is about 16 years ago, I wound up with my hand in the, in, in the claw for probably about five years before I got enough strength back that my wrist wasn't so fragile anymore and I got most of the range of motion back and I left it behind. Thankfully, I stuck them in a drawer somewhere and kept them because uh, not quite this time last year, January 2020. Again, I was at work because I was at work a lot and funny, again, serendipity, I was planning on taking a sabbatical because I was marking my over 30 year anniversary as a social worker. I figured I need a little break. Well, then the universe kicked me out the door. One of the sites I was working was a therapeutic habilitative farm for adults with disabilities. And as part of that, we collected a number of rescue cats as therapy animals. And they were very sweet. But apparently one of them who started out as a very sweet loving kitten developed some post-traumatic stress as he got a little older and started getting like super, super aggressive over food with the other cats. So he got into a pretty bad brawl with a cat that was bigger and meaner than he was, and I, I tried to basically break it up. Because, again, this cat had always been very gentle and friendly with me. I basically grabbed him from behind gently and tried to pull him away. He immediately turned on me, and in the blink of an eye, my hand looked like I just stuck it in a bucket of broken glass and twisted it around. Just sliced to pieces. So that hurt. <laughs> Burned. But by the time I got it to the sink to start rinsing the blood off, it started to swell and then it didn't feel cut up anymore it felt shattered and I didn't have any use of the hand and here I am thinking okay in that chaotic moment did I dislocate my wrist and not know it but yeah, I didn't remember hearing or feeling a pop so of course things were pretty scary and the cat was screaming at the time but yeah I don't know well it got worse and worse and worse. It got like basically melon sized and bright shiny red and hot and yeah. So the next morning I got my myself to urgent care and they informed me that certain cats and you never necessarily know which ones might carry a particularly dangerous and potentially lethal bacteria. The kind that loves to go for hearts and brains. Yeah, so if you get scratched or bitten by a cat and things start to swell, get your butt to medical care immediately. There's my PSA, do it. Well, it didn't go for my heart or my brain, but it did apparently really like my wrist. So it got inside the wrist joint 
septic wrist and started eating things. And after about five runs of really hardcore antibiotics and a couple of months of that, the swelling started to go down enough that we could assess the damage. And the main thing is that I am missing a thumb tendon. It's the EPL, which is it's this one here, which you can usually see when you when you hitchhike. It's it's the tendon that allows your thumb to go this way. Yeah. Now this would of course be my dominant hand. It would also be that I make my living with fine motor movements with my hand. Writing, typing, keyboarding, yeah. Art. The first time I did this, I could not draw or paint for five years. That was really upsetting. Here I am with something worse. And no, I have not even been brave enough to try to pick up any kind of art supplies yet. Maybe I should, just to see. But, hmm. Anyway, I did spend a lot of time learning to use my left hand. Mike, why don't you just do stuff with your left hand? Well, structurally, my left hand's in worse shape than my right, because my left hand, just for whatever reason, my lack of coordination winds up getting in the way of stuff more than my right hand does, so yeah. But I managed to do a lot of things. I taught myself kind of how to write with my left hand. I taught myself how to brush my teeth and shave and do all those important things with my left hand. Uh, the first time I could use chopsticks with my left hand. Doesn't sound like much, but that was definitely worth celebrating. That was a big deal for me. But over time, strengthening, bracing, I built myself more braces. I have an entire selection for different purposes, different different strength ratings, different kinds of support. So you'll see me in different ones from time to time. That's, that's why they're different. Um, just whatever I'm doing or whatever I'm feeling I need that day, that's, that's what's going to be on my hand. For certain things I can actually do without. Speaking of which, quick word from our non-sponsor, because yes, I have something on under the brace. We are Borg. Resistance is futile. Now this is um, TheraBand Kinotape. Highly recommended. It's surprisingly supportive of tendons and damaged joints. <laughs> really great for healing and support. And once you got it on, it stays put for days through hand washing, showers, sweating. It's actually activated by heat and moisture. So... Yeah, the only thing I would say is if you're going to use this stuff, you kind of notice it here a little bit on me, definitely shave the place you're going to put it on. Or else you will have an unplanned waxing. Yeah, just, just so you know. Anyway, braces, physical therapy. Now, obviously no jujutsu. Okay, I can still do a lot of empty hand martial arts. I can actually hit stuff with this hand really well. It's well braced. I can hit the bag and other things with the hand. That's not a problem. So hitching things is fine. Now, weapons. There's a lot of weapons I can't use anymore. I can't manipulate. However, one of the things I started with, which I outlined in, in one of my first videos, was my decision to choose getting back hardcore into Japanese swordsmanship because it doesn't rely on thumb. Most of your strength's in the bottom of your hand and then supported by your left hand. So, it seemed ideal. But as I've been getting recently into exploring European swordsmanship, some of those styles are all about the thumb. So I may need to adapt. I'm hope, I hope I don't have to totally give up. But there's certain things I just can't do. For instance, you know, somebody mentioned that certain swords are designed to, uh, to be you know, used with a glove. Guess what doesn't go on my hand anymore? Yeah, for a couple of different reasons. Clubs. I may need to custom make something. And guess what? I have the skills. So, you may see that. But you may notice that my grip is not, is not correct. Well, you know, I'm doing the best I can. And hopefully, maybe over the years, I'll start to be able to do better. Maybe. Like I said, right now it's been a year and a month. I've already made a significant amount of progress. Am I going to get it all back? Well, probably not. But a couple other odd things I can't do. I have a very large collection of knives as well. Obviously, you, you, that's not a surprise. 
I will probably review some of them. <clears throat> anyway, I was a big fan of Spyderco. Maybe I will be again. Because I found that thumb hole just supernatural. Super natural. Very natural. To open with one hand. I can do it with my left hand just fine now. Hey, that's great. But right hand. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. A few months ago, I couldn't do it at all. So, that's a thing. Talk about some other things. I can't do, but I'm kind of getting back to. I am also a serious, shall we say, firearms enthusiast. It's another martial art, after all. A very essential one in many ways, especially in our modern times. So, trigger warning again. Safety first. Empty. Empty. We always make sure. <clears throat> this is Esmeralda. So named because apparently the person who made the grips was named Esmeralda. And I just thought that was appropriate. I have for a long time, for about 35 years, just been a big fan of 1911s. They just fit for me makes sense to me. I can work on them, tune them up. Yeah. But now, just like certain other firearms I have, um, anything that's got a thumb-operated safety. Yeah, the left hand's there. Um, getting it back off again. Well, it depends on the brace I've got on at the time. I could kind of do it in a pinch, but otherwise that's going to totally rely on my left hand. Putting it on, though, yeah, that's not happening without another hand there. So that's a, that's a safety issue as far as I'm concerned. Now, can I shoot a gun? Yes, actually, just like I could after the first injury. Um, recoil sensitive, yes, a bit. It does hurt. So laying off the magnums for a while. But in some ways, if the brace is well fit to the gun, it's almost a cheat because it holds my hand and wrist so stably, it's like having the gun in a vice. So certain things about this are actually good. Other things, not so good. Let's take a look at one of the things that's not so good. Another kind of firearm that I'm very fond of is I'm a big wheel gun guy. Yeah, because I'm old. Anyway, so check, check, check. You'll notice I had to open the loading gate with my other hand. Now I can close it with my index finger, but I do not have a thumb that works to open it with my right hand. But worse, well, if it's a double action, it's no problem. I could just pull the trigger. But if I have to cock it manually, now I, I put new hammers on a couple of these, lowered so I would have an easier time reaching and grabbing a hold of them. But one of the things you're gonna notice is in order for me to do that, I do have to raise the muzzle significantly more than I'm used to and it's a much slower process. I used to be like really good with these and now yeah it's kind of sad. Can I still use one? Mostly but again depends on the brace, depends on the day and who knows a few years down the road we'll see but Cocking one of these things. More, a bigger concern for me is decocking, which is really important safety move. I just don't feel as confident. Can I do it? Yes. Am I confident that I can do it safely with a loaded firearm? Not so much. Again, these things may not be important to you, but uh, important to me. A lot of other martial arts weapons that rely on thumbs more. <laughs> it's just may get back eventually, may not get back eventually, but I'm big on adaptation. I do not consider myself like handicapped or, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm, I'm not mourning. This is yet another brace because since my left hand has been doing more work and support in place of my right hand, it's developed chronic tendonitis. Just, yeah, the fun just doesn't stop. Anyway, so yeah, you'll probably see me, like I said, eventually just duct tape together. We'll just, we'll just go with that. But uh, otherwise, I hope that answered a few questions and you might see some things in future videos that reflect back on this. Hopefully this explains it. And until those other videos, as usual, thanks for watching. 
Thanks for your comments and your support, and I hope to see you again.